The stage is set. As Americans gear up for the next presidential election, media bias will be on the mind. For the first time last year, more Americans said they didn't trust media at all than those who said they trust media a fair or great amount. Searches for unbiased news sources spike as voters head to the polls. And my next guest aims to help people navigate the media terrain with a simple chart. Vanessa Otero is founder and CEO of AdFontes Media and creator of the Media Bias Chart. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to talk about whether media bias is getting worse. We're going to stack up news outlets claiming to be unbiased with where they actually land on the chart. You know the ones. And toward the end of our conversation, Vanessa shares what is unsettling about the content being shared today and what we can do about it. Vanessa, how have you seen the media bias landscape change since you started analyzing this in 2016? It's a great question. It's grown. There's just more and more and more news sources out there, news and information sources out there every day. Unfortunately, one way it hasn't changed is that it's still quite polarizing. You know, when I started the, the media bias chart in 2016, uh, the impetus of it was really you know, the fact that there were so many polarizing news sources and people were you know, fighting over them. Uh, unfortunately, that's still the case, but there's just more to navigate. Vanessa, would you say there are more hyperpartisan options now or more options in the middle? I think there's more of both, right? There are a lot of news sources that, that are in the middle. Uh, most of the news sources we rate, actually, like the majority, uh, tend to be uh, less biased, but the ones that are on the you know, far left and right, they're, they're the loudest and they seem to get most of the attention. So it, there's really more of both, uh, but you, because there are so many news sources to choose from, people have to be really intentional about seeking out things that are minimally biased and highly reliable. What does that tell us about Americans' consumption of news if the ones on the edges are getting more viewership, more attention? Well, look, folks are polarized. Every poll that you look at just shows like increasing and increasing polarization uh, over the last you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And not just polarization, but uh, what's called affective polarization, like the kind where it makes you uh, dislike, distrust, even hate folks on the other side. Uh, that I think is really damaging and, and dangerous. Um, you know, when you're not assuming the uh, that folks on the other side have good intentions, when you're just assuming that they're um, they disagree with you because they're stupid or evil or both, um, you know, that it's really hard to come to uh, any kind of consensus. But things that you agree with, uh, they tend to give you this confirmation bias. You know, we're sort of programmed to like things that we already agree with. So, I mean, what it tells you about you know, Americans is that, you know, we can fall into those traps really easily. It's not hopeless, though. You know, we can do something about it. We can recognize that something that we're like strongly agreeing with is like just feeding our confirmation bias. But maybe that's not the most effective way to make decisions uh, or live your life. You can see that when you've got, you know, like if uh, politics has divided your family, your friends, uh, you're not able to have conversations with folks. It may be a, an indication that you're uh, really focusing on very polarizing news sources. Okay, this is going to be a hard question to answer. It's sort of a chicken versus the egg argument. Do you think that more media bias is increasing political division or do you think it's the other way around? Great question. The causes of polarization are many. You know, there are um, constitutional causes, um, you, know, po uh, cause, you, you can have politicians that drive polarization, uh, but the media is a big part of it. You know, it's a, a stakeholders in our democracy. There are, there are many, there's, you know, the citizenry, there are the politicians, um, and there's the media and each influence each other and in, in a push and pull kind of way. So one thing we've seen over the last um, you know, since the advent of cable news, really, is the participation of politicians in media. I mean, how often do you um, look at, you know, a cable news show and politicians are on the cable news show? I mean, this happens all night, uh, every, every night, every channel, right? So the media, uh, the politicians are part of the media. And politicians, um, just like every other citizen, 
are susceptible to confirmation bias, uh, to being wrapped up uh, in their own side stuff, like not being able to filter out, uh, you know, highly reliable versus low reliable uh, information. I don't know if you noticed, but, you know, there are some politicians that are not very good at telling what's true in the news. And, particip- and they participate in the uh, extreme bias of the news. So I think it's really a combination of both where they feed off of each other. Okay, so CNN says they're unbiased. Fox dropped the fair and balanced, but says they're the most trusted. What does your analysis say? <laughs> it's, it's funny. What uh, you say is a slogan and uh, what you actually do can be different things. Also, how people perceive you can be really different things. So one of the most common ways of measuring uh, media bias is consumer opinion polling, like asking people, well, how much do you trust Fox or CNN or MSNBC? And really the answer to that question tells you so much more about the person and their politics than it does about the news source. So the way we go about it is by analyzing the content, which is, it's hard to do. Like it's a little bit easier to pull a bunch of folks and say, what do you think about this? Um, But the content itself has the answers. You can look at the headlines and the graphics and each individual sentence. You can see how they're expressed as fact analysis opinion, and you can uh, fact check uh, the claims that are in there. You can see if they advocate for left or right political positions. You can see how they refer to um, their political issues or opponents. So you can actually tell from looking at the content. So what our data shows, it is that you know Fox is right leaning, CNN is left leaning, MSNBC is left leaning a, bit, a little bit more so than uh, CNN, and they have varying levels of reliability. What's really fascinating is that internet content, like going to CNN.com or uh, FoxNews.com or MSNBC.com, tends to be less biased and more reliable than their TV counterparts, uh, which have of course a lot of primetime opinion programming, and opinion programming really isn't news. Mm -hmm. It is our belief that Americans are hungry for unbiased news. That is why Straight Arrow News is here. How is Straight Arrow News doing in that mission, according to your analysis? Really well. You know, I think Straight Arrow News is correct in the assumption that people are looking for unbiased news. Now, of course, you know, everyone has some bias, right? There's, it's really hard to be unbiased, but you can mitigate your bias as best you can by trying, uh, by uh, you're know, showing balance, uh, by being, uh, you're describing things as straightforwardly as possible. We've seen so many Americans say like, yes, we want unbiased news. Like, can, can I just go turn something on where I'm not being you know, told what to think or uh, I'm, I'm just getting the facts, right? People say that all the time. It's one of the reasons you see this um, level of trust declining in those opinion polls. Um, people, people don't trust news when it's more full of opinion and, and, and analysis than actual fact reporting. So, you know, yeah, straight arrow news is you know right in the middle of for bias in our on our chart. Uh, that middle section is labeled minimal or balanced bias, uh, and it's rated as highly reliable. And look, that's what we're looking for in the media landscape. That's what we want. Like we want to promote the work of good journalists that are you know bringing folks facts that they wouldn't otherwise be able to find on their own. I looked at the history of Google search trends and the search for unbiased news sources was never higher than in November of 2020. What does that tell us about what Americans are looking for as they go to the polls? So much. We actually did some studies um, around uh, you know, social media and you know, monitoring the, uh, the spread of you know, biased and um, unreliable information uh, before, during, and after the November 2020 election. And there was a marked increase in you know, mis- misinformation and polarizing uh, content uh, being shared just across the board. You know, given that people have this have a need, they have a desire to want to be well-informed. They don't want to feel lost, right? Like you don't 
want to go around like not knowing what's true. It's very disorienting. It's very unsettling. So, I mean, what that tells me is that, you know, Americans recognize the problem. You know, Americans are smart. Um, they realize when there's like this flood of information that they have to sort through. And, and unfortunately, um, because there are so many news sources, you know, the responsibility falls on folks to, to sort through them. You know, our, that's, that's why we exist is because no one has time to sort through tens of thousands of information sources. So we're a reference point, right? Like ultimately people should make the determinations for themselves, learn to recognize reliability and bias. But when there are just so many out there, it's really helpful to have a guidepost. And so we, we just hope we can be that for folks. Vanessa Otero, founder and CEO of Ad Fontes Media. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Simone.